What if I told you that the creationist view of 6,000 years is true? And that the scientific view of three or 13 to 14 billion years old was true? Keep watching and find out. made some space but what I was uh, I'm sure you saw the intro so you know where I'm going what if uh, oh let me see let me put it this way if you were to create a home would you do it half-baked or would you complete it all the way through you'd complete it all the way through. So what if in six days leading up to the roughly six between six and seven thousand years most creationists uh, say the world is some go as far as twelve thousand years but God doesn't do things half-baked. So, with that being said, it is very plausible that the Earth is both only 6,000 years old, and I'm just going to use that as a reference, and about 14 billion years old. Now you're going to ask yourself, how is that? Well, remember when I asked you if you've built a house half-baked? You don't, do you? So in order to confuse the intellect, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the passage, and I'll be the first to admit that, excuse me, I do read the Bible, but I have a horrible memory when it comes to reciting phrase, or word for word, and passage numbers, stuff like that. Uh, God did, I believe, create the earth in six days. In those six days, he created a full planet as if uh, it was created from star explosions like they teach us in school. So he did it complete. So that way the earth does appear to those who are not looking for God but looking to disprove him. The earth looks 14 or the universe looks 14 billion years old. The Earth, I can't remember, th 3 billion, 4 billion years old. But for us who believe, it was done in six days. He wouldn't have created a six day old universe with what? Uh, well, yeah, the Earth was created in the beginning too. On the second day, was it? I think it started forming. Yeah. When he separated the heavens from the heavens and the firmament. So you see, God, it's, it's the same question. Did Adam and Eve have a belly button? Of course they did. They would have been incomplete without it. It would have served no function because they weren't born like children are born today, or in the past. So to say the earth is only 6,000 years old, I think is not true. And to say the earth is what, 3 to 4 billion years old is not true. They are both true. Now you're going to come down to uh, uh, carbon dating, radioactive dating, stuff like that. I don't know all the exact phrases and wording. Um, I'm not a scientist, geologist, or anything like that. I do read a lot, watch a few YouTube videos on how everything's done. Um, 
in my belief, you can radio or carbon date and get a pretty good time. But that is in place to confuse the intellect who refuses to believe in God and His way. For us, we know it can't be more than 6,000 years old. Just a rough number there. Uh, I do remember hearing the story. Uh, it's been a few years. But someone I don't remember the country it was found in but they found some Tyrannosaurus Rex bones with the blood cells and tissue still intact which at the time they said it's not possible it, human tissue just in the ground any animal tissue, it may be a hundred thousand years old at the longest. Usually within the first thousand years it's all um, biodegraded, eaten by whatever's in the ground at the time. But instead of saying uh, that uh, we might be wrong, they said, oh no, we're just going to have to change our formula. See, that's why I think, in my belief, that the Earth is both, or the universe is both uh, 14 billion to 6,000 years old, all at the same time. Uh, and the real reason I say this, starting with change, you have to start at the beginning. The beginning is always the hardest part. And that's my stumbling block. Because I always try to think, what would God do to have me change and start anew? Uh, well, I think he has pushed me towards a certain direction. And that's for me only. God pushes everyone in their own direction for sole purpose. Sorry. No. Oh. Rough road today. God pushes each and every one of us in a certain position. Almost like tests. Of course he knows the outcome already. Whether we pass, fail. Uh, he's pushing towards... say ministry uh, uh, but YouTube videos more of journaling jur blah, blah, blah. try that again journaling my experiences day to day activities stuff like that uh, and how it relates to the real world and biblical views uh and I think that's the direction this series is probably heading. Which, for better or worse, we just have to believe that God's going to get us through it, even if we do fail the test. And if we pass it, glory be to God. I think that's where life really shines is when you don't necessarily do things for yourself or other people, but you do it for the glory of God. And I'm not saying uh, you go out and feed a, a hundred homeless people and say, God, that was for you. It doesn't quite work that way. Um, you really have to, you know, first, and I think I discussed this in a previous video, you know, believe there is a God, 
Uh, second, believe he sent his only begotten son. That's who I believe he sent him. We'll have ever less in life. Uh, once you're there, you really should. And I'll say it's debatable. Some people say start at the beginning. Some say start at the New Testament. Um, I'm impartial either way. Uh, naturally, the beginning would be the place to start. Uh, because I don't think... It's a little bit hard to comprehend what the apostles are talking about unless you know the beginning. Um, some preachers can do a very good job of explaining to you what they're saying without knowing the Old Testament. But for me, I always start at the Old see how we actually got to where we are. Uh, minutes. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer video. But yeah, uh, my problem is the beginning. Um, where to start? Where to go next? How to continue on the path I've decided to undertake. Uh, will I fall or drift away? Of course. There's always a chance to get back on the straight and narrow, as you say. Always. It's never too late. Never, ever too late. No matter what you've done in life. Never too late. And I think what's really holding me back is... I've led... I was a pretty horrible person up until I met my wife. And so uh, I was a pretty good drinker up until I met her. And I quit drinking. See, we got married in 2006. I quit drinking shortly after that. Uh, now, that's not to say we won't have a sip now and then. Everything has its place in time. Uh, but God says, uh, basically, don't be a drunkard. Uh, alcohol isn't necessarily forbidden. It just says, don't put strong drink to thy lips. Uh, and that's usually, people usually say, like, whiskeys, uh, any type of spirits. Beer, I think, doesn't fall under that. Wine definitely doesn't fall under that. Uh, there's a lot of fermented type drinks that don't fall under that, that are very low in alcohol. Uh, so that was, that's some of my baggage. Yeah, it's like this, like it goes. Once you cool, once you uh, break one law, you're guilty of them all. So uh, I'm pretty much, as we all are, the sinners. I mean, I've broken all laws you could ever think of in the Bible. But it's the baggage that supposed to give to God, to Christ. Let him carry you. Let him uh, lead you. And that's where I'm, where I'm failing at the moment. So. And I think that's where some people have problems understanding born again. Born again is like my description of how 6,014 million years, a billion years, can be our present universe and Earth. Born again is a fresh start. 
in an old body with a new spirit. We are both young and old at the same time when we are born again. It's pretty neat to think about, really. How that can all correlate together. But as it looks like we got a storm possibly coming in, I'm going to cut it there. If you guys want to discuss it, please go ahead. If you got any questions, go ahead. Post below. You can find me on Twitter. All the fun social networks. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.